coffees this morning or today and to awake out of your slumber. Awake. And then turn from your sin and then turn your life to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ came to set men and women free from their sins. Amen. That was his purpose. Amen. No other reason for him to come to this earth. He died on the cross, let him die so that men and women could be set free from their sins. And the Bible says in the words of Christ, he that commit a sin is a servant of sin. And therefore, he that is free is free indeed. So you can find freedom through Jesus Christ. And you can find peace and true joy and true life and real living by turning your life to Jesus Christ. Sin does not bring life, folks. I mean, living it up, being a drunkard, being an idolater, being a fornicator, being a homosexual, taking God's name in vain, partying, all those things that you think maybe a, a way of living life or living it up is actually bringing you death. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. I mean, but the gift of God is eternal life. I mean, that means the payment for sin. I mean, what you reap from sin is death. I mean, whatsoever a man, the Bible says, whatsoever a man reapeth, that he will sow. I mean, whatsoever a man sows, that he will reap. I mean, so if you sow to the flesh, I mean, if you sow to sin, I mean, if that's what you center your life around, if you center your life around the things that God hates, I mean, the things that uh, God calls an abomination. He, call, he calls you an abomination. He says for you to repent. Drunkards go to hell, young man. Drunkards go to hell. He says, the Bible says, Joel 1, 5, Awake ye drunkards, awake ye drunkards, weep and howl, ye drinkers of wine. Because of the new wine, the Lord has cut off from you. I mean, you drunkards do not have a place in God's kingdom. I mean, it says in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 that drunkards would not inherit God's kingdom. I mean, it's time that many of you pour out your beer I mean, and start serving God. There's nothing but death and alcohol. Look, I mean, you know, scientifically and, and medically speaking, it's one of the worst things you could ever put in your body. Okay? I mean, there's a reason why the term intoxication is used to describe the ingestion of alcohol. I mean, it's the ingestion of toxins. I mean, it's poison. It's rotten. Rotten barley, rotten fruit, rotten corn. That's what it's made out of. And you ingest that in your body, you ingest that alcohol, it destroys your brain cell. Every, it affects every single cell in your body when you ingest alcohol. And it destroys every 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 single cell that's that you have. It destroys your brain, destroys your liver, destroys your pancreas, destroys your kidneys. It affects your heart, affects your cardiovascular system. I mean, it brings death. I mean, but in Jesus Christ, there is life. I mean, that's new wine. Okay, that's that's, that's life. I mean, the fruit of the vine. I mean, not the rotten part of it. The fruit of it. I mean, Jesus Christ brings life. He said, "I am the way." The truth and the life, no one cometh to the Father but by me. Amen. It's only through Jesus Christ that you can have life today. Amen. You're not going to find life in your in your drinking, in your partying, amen. Even in your, your sports worship, your sports idolatry. Amen. Those things uh, are, are, are very frivolous, for one. And the joy is only temporary. It's only temporary. Amen. There's I know George has had a, a couple good seasons. Uh, here lately, but eventually that's going to end. Eventually they're going to lose the game. I mean, they're not going to be national champions forever, and you're going to be disappointed. I mean, eventually your God, many of you, your God will let you down. I mean, but the God of the Bible, if you serve Him, amen, you will have peace everlasting. You will have joy everlasting. I mean, God will be faithful if you'll be faithful to Him. Amen. He will bless you if you're faithful to Him. 
Amen. He will uh, fill you if you uh, hunger after and thirst after righteousness. Now, that's what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, the words of Christ. He that hunger and thirst after righteousness, he shall be filled. Is that what your hunger and thirst is for today? The righteousness of God? The holiness of God? Amen. I'm talking to many of you that profess to be Christians here. Is your, is your true desire to draw closer to Jesus Christ? Amen. To do a work for Jesus Christ? To let Jesus Christ? Hey, that's the guy in Charlotte. Is that truly, amen, what you desire to do? Pastors that's down here? Deacons that's down here? Song leaders that's down here? I mean, it should be. It should be your utmost desire to be a living sacrifice for Jesus Christ. I mean, it should be a, a, a desire for you, amen, to sacrifice your wants and desires, amen, and to be a servant of Jesus Christ. I mean, as a matter of fact, it says in Romans 1 that that is your reasonable service. I mean, so it's just our reasonable service to come out here and preach to you. This is the, this is the basics here of Christianity, to be a witness of Jesus Christ. It's, it's the commandment he gave in the Great Commission. He said, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He didn't say to consume your time with sports. He didn't say to consume your, uh, consume your time with entertainment. I mean, he didn't say to go uh, have nice tailgate parties before the games on Saturdays. No, he said, go into the world and preach the gospel. I mean, go into the world and preach the gospel. Amen. And you need to hear the gospel. That's why he wants us to preach it. Amen. That's why he wants his uh, followers and his ministers, his disciples to go into the world. Amen. Because men and women need to hear the truth. They need to hear the gospel. Are you, are you really born again? Or are you just religious? A lot of religious people here in America. I'd say the vast majority of Americans are religious. I mean, that doesn't mean just being religious doesn't mean you're a born again child of God. It doesn't mean you've been saved. Amen. And set apart from this world. It doesn't mean you have... The, the Spirit of God dwelling within you. And Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 7, he says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not cast out devils in thy name? And in thy name done many mighty works. And Jesus, he's going to say to them, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. Amen. I mean, that's, uh, that's what the vast majority of, of people are going to hear. Religious people are going to hear. As a matter of fact, here's what Christ says about drunkenness. He says, Drunkards will not inherit God's kingdom. That's, that's, that's not a good shirt to wear. That's really not. He said to be sober-minded. Amen. Amen. It's what the Bible says. Have a sound mind. You cannot, you cannot be drunk and have a sound mind like the Bible commands for you to have. Like Scripture commands for you to have. That means healthy, healthy mind. Amen. But the Bible is clear on drunkenness. Amen. We're to be sober. We're to be sober. Amen. You know, <clears throat> back to uh, what I was preaching, though, just because you may darken the church doors on a Sunday morning, or just because you may have your name on a roll, at some church somewhere, or just because you may have even said a, a small prayer when you were 15 or 16 years old and, and just repeated something the pastor said, that still doesn't mean you've been born again. It's when you pass from death unto life. Amen. amen. It's when you've buried the old man and the new man has raised up. Amen. Old things pass away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. amen. When you're living in obedience to Jesus Christ, when you've truly repented, amen, that means have a change of mind. Amen. About your sin, you need to have a change of mind today. Many of you need to have a change of mind about your sin. You need to have a change of heart about the way you're living, about the things you've been doing, about the, the, the places you've been going, what you've been partaking of. I mean, God is not happy with sin, folks. He is not happy with your sin. The Bible says He is angry with the wicked every day. And if you're not righteous today, amen, if you don't know... Jesus Christ today, amen, if you're living unrighteously, if you're living a life uh, filled with sin, amen, I'm afraid you don't know who Jesus Christ is. Amen, you don't know who God is. So do you know him, sir? Do you know him today? Amen. Are you serving Jesus Christ? 
Well, I mean, that's, that's not my problem. That's your problem when you stand before God, young lady. I mean, if you choose to do that, that's on you. That's not on me. I'm just here to preach the gospel to you. I mean, if you choose to live in sin, if you choose to, to partake in debauchery and, and you choose to uh, partake in the things of which God calls abomination, that will be your problem. That's not my problem. My, my, my issue today is to make sure that you hear the truth. That's my responsibility. My responsibility is to make sure you hear the gospel today. And to make sure you, you're warned about sin today. Amen. To make sure that you're, uh, some of you are reproved and some of you are rebuked. And, then, uh, and that Jesus Christ uh, and his word is, is exhorted today. That's, that's what my responsibility is to do. Amen. If you know, it's not, I, you know, I really don't get upset that much if you choose to, like I said, choose to follow uh, a sinful lifestyle. Amen. Again, I said, you know, that's not on me. That's on you. Amen. Your blood is not going to be on my hands today. I can wipe my hands clean from any of that. Amen. I have presented the truth to you. I have told you the truth about alcohol today. You're going to hear the truth about alcohol and about drinking and about drunk, getting drunk. You're going to hear the truth. You're going to hear the truth today about uh, living in sin and, and, and being an, an, an idolater. You're going to hear the truth about that today. What does repentance mean? What, what does repentance mean? No, that's not what it means. That's not what it means. It means to have a change of mind. You need to have a change. Maybe you should have a change of mind about your idolatry today. Uh, with the bulldogs? Yeah. Oh, no, I love my Lord. Well. Yeah, you, you do. Yeah. So what are you, what are you doing for Jesus Christ? 100%. Huh? Um, what are you doing for him? I, I, pre I, 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 I uh, try to show him through my actions of work. Okay. Every day. So, so what's the, if somebody was to ask you what the gospel is, what would you, what would you say well, it you is? You have to repent. No, you're a sinner. Okay. Right. No, you're still not you giving me the gospel. Get in there. You got to get okay. a chance. Man. Spread the word. Now, come on, come on, come on. Let's, 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 let's stop, let's stop being passive aggressive. Come on, let's, let's, let's hear. You should, I'm, you should be able to give an answer just like that. To, to know that Christ died for your sins, okay. was dead for three days, okay. rose, went to heaven, and sits okay. the right hand of God. Okay. He's the only way to heaven. Right, he is the only way. Can you give me a scripture on how to be saved? I just told you what it is. No, give me a scripture on how to be saved. Repent. What scripture is that? Give me a scripture. John 3, 16, for God that's so no, that's not a scripture. That's, that's that tells the, the goodness of God. What about Romans 10? Romans Amen. 10, the Romans way. Oh, that's part of it. Okay. Amen. Have, have you, you, got your, so, you got your verses down. I appreciate it. Yeah. I was simply giving you guys praise, and you're going to come after me. Okay. Well, I, I won't way come way after you. I'm just asking. The Bible says to try the Spirit. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm not necessarily that's coming not, after you. Yeah, I mean, that's why we should, we should, we should ask very, each other. You're very yeah. aggressive. It's not the I know, I know. Not not John the Baptist was very aggressive. Jesus Christ was very, Baptist. very the Baptist. You're I mean, Je Jesus Baptist. Christ was very aggressive. Paul was very no, aggressive. Never. Stephen was no, very aggressive. Why not? That's who I strive to be like. You, who are you striving you to be like? Kirby Smart? Are you trying to be like Kirby Smart? I'm trying. I'm trying to be like the people in the Bible, man. I'm trying to be like the disciples and trying to be like like them. I don't think there's a lot of believers. I really don't. I don't think most people are. I think the vast majority of people are headed to hell. Okay. Well, I mean, really. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of fake Christians you out need, there. You need to look in the mirror too. Amen. I do. I do. I do. I pray every day. I do look in the mirror. I examine myself, like the Bible says. Amen. I don't, you know, waste my time going to frivolous sports games where men in tights run up and down the football field playing with balls. I just don't. You know, that's really so. It really is so frivolous. I'm not saying it's you know wrong to play. I like to play sports myself, but when you make such a an idol out of it, when you make it such a priority in your life, I mean you center your life around that. Especially you that profess to be Christian, shame on you, shame on you. You should be with all the people that's down here. You should be out preaching the gospel to them. You should be doing what I'm doing. I mean that's what you should be doing. Instead you're gonna you're gonna crowd into the stadium where there's drink a bunch of drunks a bunch of fornicators a bunch of people that uh put this before god i mean where they praise and worship the football team i mean it's it has every semblance that game today will have every semblance of a worship service you're gonna have your pre-game songs you're even gonna go as far as to sing a blasphemous song it's called glory glory to O georgia they took that song that was a hymn about the return of it's, it's that is a hymn about the return of Christ, and they tried to center it around them. That's blasphemous. That's blasphemous. And you'll sing that. And you, many of you, what's the problem? Many of you know the words to that, and you don't know the words to the battle hymn of the republic. I mean, I would not mock. I would not mock God. 
Amen. The Bible says he will laugh at your calamity. Amen. God will always get the last laugh, so don't mock him. It says revilers will not inherit God's kingdom. It's called reviling when you do that. Amen. The Bible says that fools make a mock of sin. Amen. So it's really foolish to make a mock of the things that God says, to make a mock of his law, to make a mock, uh, a mock of his standards, to mock his messengers, to mock his word, any of that. I highly recommend you don't do that. I mean, uh, it's called blasphemy. It's very dangerous ground to be on. And so so much blasphemy in today's time. I hope we don't have three young men over there uh, being blasphemous and reviling. And I hope, you know, I see them laughing. I hope, you know, I don't know. But uh, young men like that is why we come out here and preach the gospel. I mean, I was foolish one day. I was foolish like you guys were one day. I was. Amen. But I realized, I finally realized, you know, through preaching like this, amen, that I was going to go to hell if I didn't turn my life to Christ. And young men, you will too. I know you're, you know, you're living Even life Jesus right now. Hey, uh, drunkards, drunkards go to hell. Oh, Mockers go to hell, God, guys. Get right with God. You're right, you're right. Get right with God. I mean, you, you know, you, you got a loser ball team. And, and so, you know, why do you serve that? Why do you serve that? Why do you serve a bunch of losers for why do you serve a bunch of losers? Why don't you make that your God? You need to make the Amen, winner brother, your God. Amen. And that's the God of the Bible. Amen. If you if you go ahead, you can go ahead, you can skip yeah. to the end of the book. You can skip to the last book in the Bible, Revelations. You're gonna find out that Jesus Christ is the winner. If you turn from your sin, you can be a winner. Giving your life to Christ can make you a winner. Being a drunkard makes you a loser. Being a fornicator. Makes you a loser. I don't even know if I believe that. I mean, you guys are you guys are pretty sus over there. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, do, I, I did realize that. I mean, but if you are fornicating, if if you are, I, I highly suggest you you stop it. I mean, you stop doing that. Uh, you do it in, within marriage, the confines of marriage. See, that, that's, that's, how, that's how God designs sexual relations between a, a man and a woman in the confines of marriage. That's how it's, that's how it's uh, designed by God. And see, so any, anytime you get outside of that, you, get a, you have a lot of problems. It's actually uh, uh, hurts society when you're, you're promiscuous. One of the reasons why the uh, Roman Empire fell, one of the main reasons why is because they become so sexually promiscuous. They were so sexually perverted that they actually rotted within the core. Rotted from the inside out. Ain't nobody asking you, by the way. Which one? Which one? They fought wars for like a thousand years, man. Come on. Did you not read history? Did you not read history? I mean, they rotted from the inside out. Because they're see, just like America's doing. America's rotting from the inside out right now. I mean, it's because you love your sin way too much. You love your drunkenness way too much. You love your idolatry way too much. I mean, you love your sexual perversions way too much. And it's destroying your society. I and mean, ultimately, it's sin. I mean, sin is the problem here in America. It's not, it's not politicians. That's really not the problem. Even though they, they, they do cause a lot of issues, I do get that. Both Democrats and Republicans. However, elected and you, if, if you elect Trump, it's, it, unless you repent, it's not going to really make that big of a difference. I mean, what America needs to do is to repent, turn from its sin, turn from its wicked ways, turn to Jesus Christ, partake of that living water, and truly obey Jesus Christ. That's what that's what America needs to do. All right, I want to join. You want to join what? Are you, are you being serious or are you mocking? All right, well, why do you want to join? You believe me. So what, what, what have I said that you believe? I mean, it's really not me that you need to believe. You believe on Jesus Christ. You believe he's the Son of God? Amen. You believe he, he, he is God in the flesh when he came to earth? You believe he died for our sins? I mean, three days later, rose again on the right hand of the Father now, making intercession for you and I. 
I mean, are you willing to confess your sins to Christ and turn from those sins? You willing to turn from your alcohol? Huh? That over there. Huh? No, that's your, I'm seeing your hand. See, now you're a liar, too. See, the Bible says liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. I'm sorry, I lied. See, now you're mocking is what you're doing. And the Bible says God does not mock. You know, it says, I, I, I'm, 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 cut, I'm, cutting, I'm cutting this off now because it says not to, not to cast that which is holy before swine. Not to cast pearls before swine. And don't give that which is holy unto the dogs. Do you know the scripture says that the dogs are going to be without the kingdom? It's not going to be in. You'll be excluded, sir, if you don't truly give your life to Christ. Mockers will be excluded. Revilers will be excluded from God's kingdom. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 says, Revilers will not inherit God's kingdom. Well, call out to God, man. Call out to Him now. Get down on your knees and beg and cry to God. Confess your sins before Him and repent and turn from it. I'd say if you truly want to give your life to Christ and turn from your sin, go back home. Don't go in here. If you truly want, are you... I mean, really, is Jesus? I mean, it's something to think about. Is Jesus Christ being lifted up in there? We're not to have fellowship with darkness. Ephesians 5 and 11 says, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Reprove them. Come, come help us out then. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not. Well, why don't you come help us? What's more important, the football game or souls? What's more important, the football game or souls? Well, why don't you come help us? Because you really don't care. That's what it is. You're hypocrites is what you are. You're just a modern American religious hypocrite. You don't really, you don't care about it your neighbor. If you truly love your neighbor, you know, we get that thrown at us when we preach hard against sin. We get that thrown at us. Oh, you need to love your neighbor as yourself. Well, this is what loving your neighbor is. I mean, we take time out of our day, out of things that, you know, maybe I would like to do, and we come be a living sacrifice for Jesus Christ. That's your reasonable service. Go read Romans chapter one, uh, chapter 12, verse 1. That's just our reasonable service. Yeah, man. Get right with God, young man. You're going to stand before him. You ought to be laughing like a little like a little simp when you do, you know. So, I mean, you're not going to be you ought to be laughing and mocking God when you stand before Him. It does. It's not going to work like that, folks. You're not going to tell God how it is on Judgment Day. You're not going to give God the middle finger on Judgment Day. I mean, you're going to you're going to be many, most of you. You're going to be gripped with fear. You're going to be bowed down on your knees begging God. To forgive you, but it'll be too late. It's going to be too late for that guy if you don't repent come judgment day. It's going to be too late for him. I don't want to be too late for me. What, what, put down the beer then, man. Put down the beer. Go, dog. Drunkards go to hell. Have you not read the Bible? Have you not read the Bible? I mean, God's not happy with you drunks. He's not happy with you drunks. I mean, he's not happy with you beer guzzlers. Scripture says to awaken ye drunkards. And weep and howl, ye drinkers of wine. And it's time to wake up, folks. Awake unto righteousness and sin not. First Corinthians 15 and 34. And turn from your sin. Sin's leading you to hell. It's leading you to hell. I know some of your pastors may try to say otherwise. But, oh, you can just you can just sin every day and still do what you were doing, and you're good with God. That's a lie. It's a lie. We must live in obedience to Jesus Christ. We must live a sanctified life. We must live separate from this world. We can't be like the world. Expect to make it into heaven. I mean, we can't go along with the things of the world and look like the world and act like the world and expect to make it into heaven. We can't talk like the world and expect to make it into heaven. We've got to be different. Oh, it says, holiness, holiness is without, no man shall see the Lord. It says in the book of Hebrews, it's going to take holy living. 
Amen. Amen. Love I mean, we're out here winning souls. So winning. You don't have to? He says, proclaim it from the rooftops, man. Come on. Come on. See, you do have to shout it. See, there's a good example. You say, many of you say you love Jesus, but when it comes to actually doing something for Jesus, well, then I don't have time for that. The ball game is more important. I want to tell you something. This ball game is not important at all. It doesn't matter when it comes to your eternal self. Matter of fact, it really doesn't even matter for society. Society is going to go along and will function just fine without sports, without football, without SEC or NCAA football or the NFL or MLB or the NBA, or NASCAR, or any of that stuff. It'll function just fine. It did for thousands of years before, and it will for thousands of years later if God tarries. So it's not really that important at all. I mean, what's important is your soul. See, Scripture says it's appointed on the man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. That's what's important. That's what's important, folks. So back to what I was saying, we've had a lot of people coming by, you know, religious people giving us the thumbs up, a okay, fist bump, on a fist bump. But then when we say, look, we have more signs here, come help us hold signs, we got tracks, come help us hand out tracks. Oh, no. Oh, no. Can't do that. I got a ball game to go to. But I thought you were supposed to love your neighbor as yourself. I mean, what about the, hey, religious uh, person giving us the thumbs up? What about the drunkard here that's headed to hell? What about the idolater here that's headed to hell? What, 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 what about the, the nerd here that's headed to hell? I mean, what about them? What about the mocker that's headed to hell? I mean, what about the uh, fornicator and the adulterer and the homosexual that's headed to hell? Well, all of a sudden now, you know, it's not, you know, really doesn't matter that much to you. Well, it does matter. See, you, you've... You, you, you're ashamed of God. And he, he did say, Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me, then I'll be ashamed of you before my Father. Let's we'll serve Jesus Christ, man. Hey, man if, you really, if you really are on our side, come help us hold signs. Yeah, you guys lost the other day, didn't you? He did. Beamer ball sounds like loser ball to me. I mean, hey, in the, in, the, in the way things are looking, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Georgia lost today. I mean, hey, that's the way it is, you know. Hey. As a matter of fact, I kind of wish they would. Hey. And I'm not, I'm not a football fan, but I kind of hey. wish they would. Maybe some of you, maybe it would come, maybe it helps some of you realize that there's more important things than football. More important things than football. Well, at least we got the, we got the perverse here. Keep your wives and children away from those two guys. There's a lot more important things in life than football, folks. Hey, Amen. Your soul being at the top of the list. Hey, Amen. We share, we share the same sentiments with God today, the same sentiments with Jesus Christ. It's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Hey, Amen. That's what God wants. He doesn't want you going. He really he doesn't want you going to another football game. He wants you serving him. He wants you living in obedience to him. Hey, what? Well, hey, lover, throwing up the love sign. Why don't you come help us hold signs? If you really love God, we have tracks you can hand out. We have signs you can hold. You know, why don't you help a brother out? Why don't you really show the world that you truly love Jesus Christ, that you truly are willing to proclaim? See, Scripture says, so cry aloud, spare not. Warn my people of their transgressions. I mean, the great commission, the great commission that Jesus Christ gave that is for every one of his disciples. Not just the 12 that day, but for every one of his disciples. He said, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. I mean, you can say you're a Christian, that doesn't mean you are. And Jesus Christ asked, actually addresses those things. He mentions that in Matthew chapter 15. He says, with your lips... You draw nigh unto me with your heart. You've honored me. I'm, I'm sorry. With your lips, you've drawn nigh unto me. With your mouth, you've honored me. But your heart is far from me. Your heart is far from me. 
I think that exemplifies. That exemplifies the modern American church. That exemplifies. I mean, most churches on street corners here in America, they profess, they claim they know God, but in works they deny Him. He saves from sin. Jesus Christ saves you from sin. He saved you so you can be. You don't have to be a drunkard. You don't have to be an idolater. You don't have to be a whoremonger. You don't have to be a whore. You can be. You can be set free and be a child of God. That's what he saves from. He saves from sin. Why does he save from sin? Well, sin destroys. Sin kills. Sin brings death. I mean, sin brings the wrath of God. Sin brings the judgment of God. I mean, do you realize that the more you continue in your sinful ways, maybe you, the more, just the more wrath you're heaping upon yourself, the more judgment you're heaping upon yourself? I mean, the more you, you get drunk, the more uh, you're heaping judgment upon yourself. Even if you aren't Pentecostal. Amen. But we want you to experience the goodness of God. Amen. We want you to experience the, the power and the saving power of Jesus Christ. Amen. This may be your last opportunity to hear the truth and to get right with God. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Amen. I mean, God's been merciful to you. He's merciful enough to send preachers down here today to preach the uh, truth to you. He cares about you that much. And he doesn't have to do that. He doesn't have to lay it on men and women's hearts to come down here and to preach the truth to you and to preach the gospel. I mean, he's God. He can do what he wants. But he is a benevolent God. He is a merciful God. Oh, he's showing great mercy upon you today. I mean, the things many of you do, which a lot of you do, you've committed grave enough sins that God can just wipe you off the face of the earth and be justified in doing it and be completely justified in doing it. He's complete, he'd be completely justified for, by sending a hurricane through here today just wiping Athens off the map. However, he's merciful. However, he has mercy on you. He will see you saved, sir. He will see you born again. He will see you a good person. He wants to make you a good person. And he wants to make you a holy person. He wants to make you a righteous man. I would say this is the best thing I could do. As a matter of fact, I, I wonder and I question myself. Don't you guys have anything better to do than to go watch a bunch of kids run up and down a football field in tight pants? Man, there's got to be much better things to do. I mean, like watching paint dry. At least there's something productive going on. Man, this is the best thing. Especially if you're a child of God, this is the best thing that you can be doing. This is what we're doing. Preaching the gospel. Preaching the gospel. Warning sinners about their sin. Come help us out then, man. Uh, get right with God. Quit mocking. You're going to go to hell for that. And the best thing you can do is to preach the gospel. I mean, preach the goodness of God. Preach the goodness and the severity of God. Warn people about their sins. Tell them about what Jesus Christ did on the cross. I mean, tell them about the goodness of God. Tell them about the mercy of God. No, sir, you lied. I said you will go to hell if you don't do such and such. And that's true. I mean, that's true. In fact, as a matter of fact, most people are headed to hell. Most people are walking uh, the broad way that leads to destruction. Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, to enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in therein, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few there be that find it. Come help us, sir. I got some signs here you can hold. Oh, the game's, the game's more important, though, ain't it? Right, right. It's more important. Yeah, more important than souls. I know for most of you it is. Mission, we see where your priorities lie. I mean, we'd love to. I have extra signs. I have tracks. I'm serious when I say that. Those of you that's giving us the thumbs up, those of you that's saying you're Christian, saying you're good, come help us, man. What's more important? What's more important, the ball game or, or preaching the gospel? What, what's more important? What's more important? 
See, see, there, there, there's, there's the heart of the American Christian. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. The Apostle Paul writes in 2 Timothy, from such turn away. I don't believe any of you hardly when you say that you're good with God, when you say that you're a Christian. When you'll sit there and say, well, I would, I would help you preach the gospel. I would help hand out tracks to sinners, and I would be a witness, but i got a ball game to go to. Now, how hypocritical. How pathetic is that? He hates, he hates the Bulldogs just as much as he hates the Gamecocks. Georgia, uh, Georgia is not even a a, 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 blink, a, a spot in, in God's eye. He, he doesn't care. He doesn't care about your football game today. I hope you know that. He don't care. He cares about your soul, young ladies, what he cares about. You know, if, if every offensive record for a single game is broken today, guess what? God won't care. God won't care. I mean, but you know what he does care about? You know, you know what he is concerned about? He's concerned about your soul. He's concerned, young lady, about the condition of your heart. Amen. He's concerned what you're teaching these young ones, sir. He's concerned about it. He, he, wants, you, he wants you to preach the gospel to them, not take, not, not take it to a place where young men run up and down a football field in tight pants. Now, that's not what God really wants you to do, uh, teach your children. That's not, no, no. He says, he says to teach them in the right way, and they shall not depart from it. Teach them in a godly way, they won't depart from it. Read the Bible to them. You reading the Bible to that young man? You praying with him? Turn to Jesus Christ today, folks. Turn from your sin. Turn from your sin. God don't care about the dog, sir. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. No, no. You see, see what he cares about is you to quit making him an idol. That's what he cares about. That's what he cares about. Come help us hand out tracks. Come on. Come help us hand out tracks. Come help us hand out tracks and hold signs. No, come help us hand out tracks, gospel tracks, and, and hold signs. No. Oh, what do you? Huh? Why do you love MLK? What do you do? He, you know, you know, he was an, an, an adulterer too. Adulterer. Yeah, he he had a lot of girlfriends. You turn to the God of the Bible. You may put down the beers. You may turn from the idolatry. Turn from your idols. Turn to Jesus Christ. And repent today. Repent and believe the gospel. You know what needs to happen in that stadium today? People need to repent. That's what needs to happen. Amen. People need to pour out their beers. Huh? Well, why don't you come help us? Come help us. Come help us preach. Yeah, you really, you really not, you're really not. Then are you? You really don't care, do you? You really don't care. What's more important? I mean, I'm asking you know, seriously, guys. What's more important? Serving God, obeying Jesus Christ, preaching to lost people, preaching to sinners, proclaiming Jesus Christ, or a ball game? Obviously. For the vast majority of you professing Christians today, it is a ball game. A ball game is what's more important what? to you. You really don't love God. You're not following the great commandment. You really well come help us. Come help us. You're getting well, you're getting drunk for one. Drunkards go to hell. But if you're truly a Christian, come help us. Come help us. That's what I thought. Think with your finger instead of your brain. Yeah, you're, many of you professing Christians today, you're showing, like that man, well, that guy right there is just showing how stupid he is. He's showing us his IQ, number one. That's what he's doing. I mean, but you're showing, you know, what's important. I, I would love, I would love for you to profess to be Christians to come help us. I have thousands of tracks. I have signs you can hand out. I have signs you can hold. 
We'd be more than happy if you profess to be a Christian. If you are born again, we'd be more than happy for you to help us out. I mean, don't you think that's more important than a ball game? I mean, that in, in two or three years, nobody's ever, ever going to remember it. Nobody will ever, they won't remember it. And God surely doesn't care about it. I mean, but He does care about you. He is concerned about you. He is concerned about where you're going to spend eternity. I mean, He did send His Son to die on the cross for you, young man, that you could be saved. Hey, come help us. Come on. Come on. What's more important, a ball game or, or being a witness for Christ? The Bible says you can't serve two masters. That's the words of Christ. You're going to hate one and love the other. Oh, no, you can't. you got to serve one or the other. you got to serve one or the other. I mean, you got to serve God. When you truly love God, all these other things of the world, they just, they, they, they just drift away. As a matter of fact, Scripture says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Turn to Christ today, folks. Turn from your sin. Pour the beer out. Serve God today. Christ out there. Come help us. Come help us. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, the ball game is more important than, it, than sinners, right? More important than lost people, right? I know. I know. You guys, you guys are just showing me what your God really is. Who your God really is. See, this is what's called, what we see here today is what's called idolatry. Idol. Idol worship. You love your football more than you love your neighbor. You love your football more than you love God. The very first commandment God gave, his more, when he wrote his moral law in stone and gave it to the children of Israel, he said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. They asked Jesus, they went to Jesus Christ and asked him what the greatest commandment was. He said, To love thy Lord God with all thy heart, thy might, thy strength. Hey, quit being a little beta now. Come on, let's, let's get, pick it up here and do it again. Come on. Come on. Well, why, don't, why don't you serve him? Why don't you serve him instead of serving the dogs? Come on now, young lady. That's the truth. Well, why don't you why, why don't you come why don't you come help us? Why don't you, I want to scare him. I want to scare him to death. I want them to wake up. I want them to have fear. Some preach with fear. Hating the garment spotted by flesh. Pulling them out of the fly, fire. I mean, some of you, you need to be scared. You need to have a little bit of fear about the way you're living. About the things you've been doing. You need to have a little guilt and shame. About what you've been doing. You need to feel bad about what you're doing. You need to feel bad about your sin. You need to feel guilt about your sin. You need to be ashamed. Sin is shameful. Turn to Jesus Christ today. Let God transform you today. Be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Amen. He can transform you today. Amen. Some of you, you're steeped in sin. You're living a life that's deep in sin. A life that's contrary to the law of God. Contrary to the word of God. Amen. But you can be transformed today. So many of you, you have a mind that you've geared towards wickedness, geared towards evil, geared towards perversion. Amen. But God, God can change your mind today. You can have a mind geared toward holiness, geared towards righteousness. See, that's what the goodness of God does. That's what the grace of God does. Why don't you come help us, sir? You willing to help us? Why not? It's not, it's not that important. Well, well, come help us. What, what do you think would be the best thing for that young man? To be a witness for Christ? Or go to another ball game where people don't care about him? I mean, let's, let's, let's be real, folks. I mean, it is that serious. We're drawing close to the end. I don't know if you realize, you know, the signs of the time point towards 
the soon coming of Christ, the soon return of Christ. Oh, big tough guy there. Man, you've really impressed that girl. You've really impressed her. You've really impressed her, man. She, she is so proud of you. She is so proud of you. Turn to Jesus Christ, folks. I mean, let Christ change your heart. Let him change your mind. Let him wash your sins away.